Hey guys, so if you're a Home Assistant user, but you've also got some Apple devices and you've got HomeKit up and running, but you wanna integrate some of the Home Assistant devices that you can't integrate into HomeKit, and you wanna find out how to do that, then this is the video for you. Today I'm gonna to take you through the process step by step. I'm gonna give you a few examples of certain entities that you can expose into HomeKit, and just give you some advice and general guidance. I'm gonna be adding in the following devices that do not work out of the box with HomeKit, but do work with Home Assistant. I've been showing you a Nest thermostat, Sonos speaker, home alarm panel, a garage door, real link camera, Anki camera, Nest Hello, and an LED light strip from the Zignita ring from Ajax Online. Ajax Online today is sponsoring this video, and you can check out all of the devices at ajaxonline.co.uk. As you can see, they've got the Zignito range, which is a range of Zigbee devices that you can integrate in your own smart home. They have buttons, contact sensors, motion sensors, light sensors, LED light strips, and blinds, and all sorts of things. So go check out their website. They've got cool, cool technology. They ship, they're UK based, but they also ship worldwide, so you should be fine with that. But now, let's roll the intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers. In this channel, we look to transform ordinary homes into smart homes. Now let's immediately jump into Home Assistant. Go to your configuration tab, click on integrations, click on add integration, search for home kit, add it in. Okay, so at this stage, be careful of the domains that you need to include. What I would do at the beginning, I would try to avoid including all of your domains that you want to include initially. So let's say, for example, I'm going to untick everything and I'm only going to include the alarm panel. So just go through this list and untick everything. You should have something like this with only one domain left. Click Submit, and now we can actually go through the pairing process with HomeKit. So I'm going to click Submit. Now I'm going to get the bridge, signal this, click on finish. You'll have a notification here on the left hand side and this is going to be your QR code. You can use this QR code to set up your HomeKit bridge. And this is going to allow HomeKit and Home Assistant to communicate. So at this stage, get your phone, unlock it and go to your Home app. Click on the plus button, click on add accessory. And now you just go over here, you should scan it and you have bridge, so click add to home, add anyway, and continue. So you can put the bridge in a location, continue, keep on going, and you'll see your home alarm. So you can say continue. This will depend on how many home alarms you have. Just keep, keep, keep carrying on. At this stage, you have uh, very cool options. So you can immediately set up some security with HomeKit. So you can tap this on, for example, to say when the first person arrives, disarm, and when the last person leaves, arm. So this is a feature that you really can't get out of Home Assistant immediately. You can do it with code if you know what you're doing, but HomeKit makes it super easy for new people. So tap on continue, tap done. Now we've linked up HomeKit and Home Assistant initially. Let's go back to Home Assistant and you can see various options here. We have one service and we have the name of the bridge. It looks all set up properly. Now click on configure and we're going to try and expand more options. So if I go and click Submit, now we have some other option. So we can exclude entities. So if we had multiple entities, we can say, I want to exclude a specific entity because I don't want to expose that to HomeKit. You can also do the reverse and include only certain entities. So let me give you an example. So if I go and configure, and let's start, let's say light. So I have many lights in my home from different manufacturers. And now my goal is to add those LED light strips, the ones from the Zignito range. So I'm gonna click on submit. Now I've got exclude. So hypothetically, I have a bunch of devices now that I could pull in. And the problem is because HomeKit is already linked up with other, or other manufacturers, let's say you have a Philips Hue bulb that's in Home Assistant and you've also got it connected into HomeKit. What you don't want to do is, is have the second entry in HomeKit, or one coming from the Hue bridge and one coming from Home Assistant, because that's just going to confuse your whole setup. So what I would do is I would only include the lights that you cannot integrate directly into HomeKit. So go on to include and 
you can go down and you can go and find the exact one that you want to add in. So I'm ticking this Zignito light strip. Click on submit, click on submit. Now let's sit, jump into the home app and I'll show you how that all it looks. So we're in the home app on my Mac that you can see right here. You could also access the home app on your iPhone, iPad, or whatever device you have, but it's easy to show you on the, on the laptop here. So we have our Signido light strip. It's pulled in in the landing. So I've got it right over there. I've got the light over here. So if I just tap off and on, I can control it like that. So if I could go on to show controls, and I can change the color. So you can see that the light strip is very responsive. I can change the brightness. Even if it's going through Home Assistant, so it's HomeKit talking to Home Assistant, which Home Assistant uses a Combi 2 stick through Zigbee protocol is talking to this device. But it is going through all these hoops, but you can see it's quite stable. The question will be how um, reliable would this be going forward? I'll let you know and subscribe to the channel to find out updates in the, you know, in the future to find out how this actually works and how reliable it is. So let's look at that alarm panel that I talked about earlier. So we've got the security system. You can see it says off. If I were to tap on it, I have the actual name of the security system, which I could just rename to whatever. You can set other things. Again, those are the, these are the two automations that automatically were suggested by HomeKit to add in. And you've got the mode. So you've got a home, away, night, and off mode. Now, this will match exactly the same thing that's in Home Assistant. So if I go from off and I set it home, you can see the status changed to arming. And in Home Assistant, you can see that the alarm panel is starting to blink. So that means that this system is arming. So a problem happens if you try to disarm. So if you go from home kit, and you try and go off, it's still sort of flashing, right? It's, it's not disarming properly. So I've punched in the code, it just got disarmed, and the status in HomeKit does update. So we're gonna need to figure that, this out properly. Because in our alarm panel in Home Assistant we have a code, then HomeKit obviously doesn't know what code it is, so it's not able to disarm it automatically. For this, we're gonna to need to go into the configuration.yaml and add the code, really set this whole thing from over there. Now, if you don't really have an alarm panel, you can probably get away without using configuration.yaml and you can just configure everything from the UI without touching the code, which is quite good. But I'm gonna show you now how I fix this problem. So I'm going jumping into Visual Studio Code, jump into the configuration.yaml file, now all this code, you'll find it as usual in my blog. Just open up another tab and Google Leonardo Smart Home Makers, and it should be top entry, uh, and you'll find the blog post over there. And here you'll find, and in the blog post, you'll also find some more information I'm not able to include in this video. But anyway, back to this, you can see the information on what I've got currently set up over here. Now I've already set up all of my entity IDs that I want to include. A couple of things to go through. HomeKit is gonna be your standard way of uh, adding things in. To add in HomeKit filter, so including domains will generically include all of your entries under the alarm control panel. So hypothetically, you don't need to include this line to specifically include the entity if you're already including it in the domain. But if I wanna remove this domain part, now I can potentially because I've got it all in here under include entities. So I've got all of these entities, like I said at the beginning of the video, I have an alarm panel, the LED light strip, a Sonos surround system in my lounge, and a few cameras, uh, one in the parking bay, the front door, which is a Nest Hello, garage camera, which is an Anki, uh, parking bay, we have a Rio Link, and we have a Nest thermostat, and my garage door, which is operated by Shelly. If you wanna find out more information about any of these devices, you can just check my channel. I've made several videos around these other um, components. For you really to apply for the uh, home alarm panel is this one over here. You're going to need to add this in alarm underscore pan control panel dot our home alarm, which is going to be your specific entity ID name. And adding this code, I've added my code in the secrets.yaml and just put your alarm code over there. Once you've got that done, you'll be good to go. What I would suggest also is 
If you haven't renamed your entity IDs yet, do that first so that it's going to be nice and clean and also rename your friendly names or your names so that when it comes into HomeKit, it comes in with a nice name that you recognize. So let's go back into the Has IO bridge and I'm just going to go and delete this. So clean it up nicely. Now we've got our code in here, so you can save that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to server controls, just quickly check the configuration to see if there are any problems with the syntax. And we've got configuration valid, so we can proceed. Restart Home Assistant. And when Home Assistant comes back up, we have that notification again, uh, prompting us to do another QR code scan. In HomeKit, if you've added devices in through the UI and then you move to code, you're going to need to remove the bridge manually from the device. And then it should be all clean. So go on to one of your entities that you expose. You should have a cogwheel over there. Just scroll down, look for bridge. You should see two accessories, has bridge. Just tap on remove has bridge. In this way, it's gonna remove all of your devices that you've set up for the UI if you move it from UI to code. Give it a few minutes and you should go back to the home app and you should see everything pulling in. If you're enjoying this video so far and you're getting value out of it, remember to like the video. That tells me that you guys are enjoying it and you wanna see more content like this. And also, it helps me with the YouTube algorithm and spreads the word around. So Home Assistant's back up. We've got the notification right here. So I'm gonna scan again, gonna add to home, add anyway. And here we gotta go through a list of setting up things. So there's gonna be different things you're gonna to need to add in. So it's telling me we've got something called front door and you can just decide where things are. It might be a little bit tedious, but you just go through it once you set up all of the rooms properly and then you're good to go. Here you have immediately some suggestions from the garage door or motion detected in the garage, turn on garage landing, no, let's leave that as is. Parking bay, we'll put that in the hallway and just continue. And obviously you can always change this later. Garage door, put it in garage. All right, this is very interesting. More automations here coming in automatically. When the first person arrives home, open the garage door. When the last person leaves home, close the garage door. Yeah, that sounds quite interesting uh, to do. When open, turn on the garage door. I'm not gonna do any of that. You have automations with the light strip. Let's continue. And you can then activate motion sensors. So you see if there's a motion sensor, you can say, then turn on the light strip. So you can do a lot of cool things automatically. Home alarm, I'm gonna enable this. Continue. We've got our uh, media player and we'll put that in the uh, living room. And we I've set it up so that it works with play, pause, and mute. This is all things that you can configure in the configuration.yaml tab. Click on continue, nest thermostat. That's going in the kitchen. Getting that all set up. We can say if the last person leaves, turn off the thermostat, fine. So we're back into the home app after everything's restarted and we've set it all up with our phone. And you can see we have a beautiful display. We have three cameras, the three cameras that I've set up. You have the little seconds over here and this is sort of the delay time between, I guess, real time. So I'm not actually sure about the camera quality that's gonna disable to come through in this way. It could be something that because I'm on Wi-Fi currently, but that's something that we'll be testing out in the future. We've got our thermostat here set up and potentially we can all control this, all good. We have a light strip that I showed you earlier. And we've got our living room controls. I just wanted to show you this quickly. So by sliding up, you can play and then you can pause, you can mute. Don't find this terribly useful, but that's how you could control a, a media player from Home Assistant into HomeKit. And the security system for me is my favorite one because it sort of uses my iPhone's location. It's pretty accurate uh, in terms of the zone so it can turn off and turn on the security system and I'm quite uh, looking forward to that. We've also got this garage door, which I've literally just opened now. And if you hear this, the noise of the garage door opening, you will probably uh, know that's real time. So the garage door's opening, Camera quality is not great in terms of seeing how things work. Might be just now, 
might be a, a temporary glitch, but if I were to go to Home Assistant, let me show you. So you can see here in Home Assistant, the quality of the camera is it's, it's much better. So I wouldn't really use this system much for cameras, but you can put it in, there's nothing wrong with that, but it does look like there's some sort of, you lose some quality when you move to HomeKit. Now, if you wanna find out more on how I built my smart home, I'm gonna link in the description below my link to my smart home course, and that's gonna actually show you everything that I've done from planning to the devices that I bought, how I set it all up, and it's really made for a, an average user, someone that really doesn't want to do a complex system but wants something that just works and works really well for them. And it actually is what I've got here in this smart home over here. You can also check out the Lifetime Bundle. And in that bundle, you can find different type of courses. The latest course that I'm working on is a Node-RED Automations course. So if you're gonna be interested in that, check the links down in the description below. And I'm tremendously grateful to all of you that have already signed up to these courses. I put a lot of effort into them and I really hope you get to enjoy them. But here on YouTube, I've got plenty of other content that you can check out. So you can click on this other video over here to see the DIY alarm panel of how I created it step by step. This is quite a long video, around 40 minutes. If you haven't got time to watch it now, put it in your watch later. I've got another suggestion right here from YouTube and that's their recommendation. Let me know which one you actually follow and you enjoy the most. This was Gio from Smart Home Makers. See you in the next one. Peace.